Hello guys, welcome to this new exciting video from TV Random. Today we're going to be talking about how to build your brand and how to get started on YouTube. Starting with some tips and hints and hacks on how to really get invested into YouTube and what little things that you need to know to get started. Okay, so as silly as it sounds, to get started on your brand before you've even thought about the first video, blah, 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 you need to have the idea what you want to do with your channel. What videos do you want to make? Now, personally, I would say film or make videos about things that interest you because if it doesn't interest you at all, you're going to find it much more harder to make videos and have confident, confidence in yourself. Believe in what you're doing. And... If you truly believe in what you're doing, it will come across on camera and people will get invested in what you're doing and people will love your videos more. So once you've thought about you know, what video you want to start making, what you're going to do with your channel, what you're going to call it, this sort of thing, and that's something we haven't thought about, innit? The name, what are you going to call it? I mean, most people literally just put, yeah, John, Eric, 72, or Wall White, and whatever, you know, you might think, oh, okay, cool. And, but being brutally honest, it's got to be something that's relevant to what you're doing. Otherwise, there's just, you know, the audience won't connect with it. So really think about what you want to call it. And the good thing about YouTube is you can change it, da change it down the line. Like, for example, I started off as Random Dave 12 and now it's obviously the TVI universe. So we've evolved over time. It's really important to think of something that connects with your audience as your audience are ultimately the most important part of YouTube because if you don't connect with them, the whole thing becomes pointless. So really think about something, you know, if you're a gamer, for example, something to do with gaming, perhaps mixed with your name or some sort of nickname, but something that's relevant to your channel. If you're making videos about birds or chickens, that sort of thing. So really think about that. And when you think of equipment, believe it or not, the, the easiest and funniest thing that you'll never you'll probably even think of you think oh god i need i need this camera and that camera and maybe uh -huh. i need lighting and all the rest of it before you even get started <laughs> you've got your phone your phone is the most useful bit of kit you can come across it's so good and most phones nowadays um will film in in great high quality and hd and if not higher Phones are really good at filming, they're really good at recording sound if you want to record like voiceovers um, or if you're not quite happy with the recording of a sound you can record it back, this sort of thing. And so think of your phone as a really useful tip and this is something that we'll probably talk about a lot today, um, that your phone is, is your number one tool. Think of everything as branding, you know, what your cover looks like. Um, what your profile picture looks like, what playlist you got on your channel, um, what order they're in, mix it up a bit. You know, I personally try and mix them up like once a week or every week or so, just so the channel feels fresh. Obviously, as you're making new videos or new series. So continuing on with the the theme of of audience, and I can't push this. You know, sort of mixing between brand and audience is you know, uh, a partnership sort of thing. You know, your brand is everything that your viewers are seeing from your covers and your profiles. And the audience is everybody that are seeing your branding and they're the people you want to pull in because you guys are the most important people to the TBI universe or to um, any any channel or any of you out there that want to make videos or become a YouTuber. There's nothing more important than you the viewers so really think about that um and sort of going on from that i want to think um sort of make you aware of really try and find a niche um you know there's so many you know gamers there's so many people that how to's this sort of thing and i think some of the more creative youtubers are finding niches in that like for example i probably shouldn't say this out loud but if I was going to become a, say, gamer, I'd perhaps try and find a more unique niche. So, for example, I love DOS games still, and I've discovered recently that there's still loads of people out there that also like DOS games. So I would perhaps make my channel more evolved around that. If any of you already do that, Wicked, have passion with every part of your YouTube channel. As silly as that sounds... You know, you might have go, oh yeah, I want to make a YouTube channel, make a couple of videos and then get distracted by dust or, you know, some floating cloud in the sky and then you drift off or you get burnt out because you're trying to make 800 videos in a day or whatever the reason is. You've got to have passion. If you really, really want to do this, just like in anything in life, you've got to have passion. You've got to think, you know what, I really want to do it. Now, if you're literally just here to make videos for fun, 
massive applaud to you, massive thumbs up. I want you to think, and this is what a lot of content creators also say as well, when you're making every video, think about audio first, video, in the sense of just video quality, and lighting. Now I want to go into that more detail. Um, so when I say audio, um, at the moment I'm using a mini microphone jack which is just on top of my camera and if you're using your phone um, to begin with or if you do have a little camera um, think about the audio so when you watch back your video think you yeah, know that sounds all right how can I make that better I cannot emphasize that enough um, I personally try every video I watch even ones I make now I will watch it and go right I could have made that better I don't don't sort of stress yourself out over it but perhaps just think, how can I make the audio better? So if you've got a phone even, perhaps investing in a small external microphone that may connect to your phone. Um, if you've got a little camera, perhaps get a, you know, a similar camera that has a microphone jack. If you are looking at cameras, um, definitely, definitely, definitely get a camera that has a microphone jack, um, whatever the video camera is. So you can then eventually plug in, in the future, a um, external microphone. Uh, one microphone that I do like to use, so it is a bit of a pain to set up, so you probably know I don't always use it, is I also have a studio mic that gives off really good sound. Um, it is a bit of a, a pain to set up, but it, it, the audio it produces is brilliant. Now, the camera I'm using at the moment, um, brilliant camera, can uh, fault it, absolutely brilliant camera. Um, I. It's internal microphone is pretty good. If you know, if we're just doing random videos, it's actually all right. And the external microphone I've been using, um, I'm on my second one now. Literally cost me about 15 quid. It's brilliant. The sound it's producing now, and my little studio mic that clips on here that costs about 10 quid, and the sound that that gives is really good. Now, something that I'm personally going to look into is setting up a second tripod, because I've got loads of tripods, and have the microphone as close to me as possible, but out of shot. Um, and this will produce, I know through experimentation, that this will produce higher quality sound. Um, so think about that. So if now going on to uh, video, how can you film it better? You know, if you're using your phone, do they have a slightly higher quality video setting? Think about that. But also bear in mind when you're uploading, um, if it's, you know, too high. I mean, I know a lot of YouTubers now are definitely filming in HD, which a lot of you should be really anyway. But some people are recording and uploading 4K, which is great. But, oh, if any of you try to upload in HD, that takes long enough as it is. <laughs> So, so just bear that in mind and plus obviously it uses much more space up on your phone so maybe you want to get yourself a little SD card, again it doesn't cost the earth or you already might have a high top of the range phone anyway so you've got plenty of space, just delete it but don't delete it until after you've posted it obviously. Um, back it up on a certain hard drives, we'll talk about that more later. Um, but what I would say is really think about that, if you're using a point and shoot video camera, nothing wrong with that, I've got some great um, cameras. Uh, point and shoot cameras, one of them is a really good point and shoot. I must admit, I haven't used it for a while just because I love this camera so much, but it's a brilliant camera for taking, um, you know, footage, you know, family uh, footage or making short films and videos, that sort of thing. Now, outside, if you're filming outside, I know for personal experience, and I've learned this the hard way, if you don't have an external microphone or a way around that or recording the sound later, it's going to be really difficult to record anything fluently. You'll get that. Um, recently I've been using a box light which is coming in off in and out um, because of the uh, ref if you wear glasses like me because of the reflection I found by reflecting the light off a wall a white wall if possible and um, it just gives a softer light and you don't get that horrible reflection and making it a bit of a a bit of an angle as well so sort of coming in at an angle makes it easier as well and it gives you a nice um, a softer light and today I'm actually using a mini light sort of the left to sort of fill up um, some of the shadows that my main light gives. I have got two big lights but I didn't I felt two floodlights would or box lights would maybe be, be a bit overpowering so just bear all that in mind and also for a lot of you use the sun if you're filming indoors just film the shot um, by the window uh, which hopefully I'm going to knock in now with some b-roll. Um, b-roll is um, basically if you're not familiar with that term, 
is added bits of video to make these videos or any videos a bit more interesting, especially if you're doing tutorials and stuff like that. So when you're using lighting, think about how you can use the sun. If you're outdoors, think about where the sun is or if you've got a light outside, think how you're reflecting that. So just think, think, think about audio, lighting and video in every video you're making. And one thing I would just note on that is when you watch your video back, even as you're editing or maybe days after you've posted, look at it and go, right, that's good or it isn't good. How can I make any of those three things better? Just read or watch videos on how YouTube works and what makes a good channel, what works for you so you can learn. It's like anything, isn't it? You know, if you learn to drive, you might take courses or might just trial and error. I highly recommend trying to be, in each video, I mean, I know a lot of this probably feels really overwhelming, but I would personally say, um, in each video, a spare moment something different. What I try to do is go, right, in this video, I'm gonna play with the audio. Or in this video, like I am today, I'm gonna change around with the lighting, see if I like it better or worse. If I don't, I won't do this style again in the next video. I'll use different light, you know, just think about that and learn as much as you can, you know, how best to tag, use um, plugins. Uh, I don't know if some of you may or may not have heard of, of TubeBuddy, highly recommend it, even if it's just a free version, it just plugs into your channel, gives you little hints and tips as you're posting your videos about what tags you've perhaps forgotten to use on your video. It does all sorts of helps and tips. I'd highly recommend giving it a go. Um, so I'm gonna break up this video with a little bit of comedy. Um, if you've got this so far in this video, we're about halfway, um, don't go anywhere. We've got so many more hints and tips and more hacks to help grow your channel and your brand here on YouTube. There's so much more I wanna tell you. There's just some of the few things that I've learned over the last few months. And I, I wanna share that with you, the TVI universe. And um, please comment below. Um, what you like or didn't like about this video and if you enjoyed this video so far give it a thumbs up give it a like share with family and friends and let's crack on with some more tips <laughs> okay so we're going to call this sort of part two of the video if you've got this far thank you massive thumbs up to you you guys really are the core of the tbr universe and um, i just want to ask um just briefly um what you think makes a good thumbnail which is an interesting question. What what do you think makes a good thumbnail? Um, which leads on to our next part of our video. And I know there are people out there that just like to use whatever picture or think, oh God, it takes ages on Photoshop. Nothing against Photoshop. It's a brilliant program, very resourceful, but sometimes it takes what feels like forever just to make a simple thumbnail. Um, and I wanna give you some tips now on how you can improve on that and easy ways to get around that. If you wanna make a quick, easy, um, a thumbnail, there are loads of uh, websites, you can just search them on Google and you can come across them, I think there's one called Carver, something like that, and that just gives you lots of thumb, uh, thumbnail templates, you just sign in with an email and you can just customise it, um, po you know, load up your picture, put some text on it, save it as a JPEG, done. Um, and then a, a bit of advice would use, going back to, you know, one of your closest friends as a content creator, your phone, I'd highly recommend um, going on your store, um, your app store, whatever it's called, <laughs> and looking for photo and video editing software makes your life so much easier. I've started being using a little app at the moment called Polish, which is a brilliant, brilliant uh, little app. Um, it's just really good for editing photos quickly, you know, if you're on the move or you just, you know, maybe you're just making dinner or something, you want to make that quick thumbnail before you post your video or, or however you do it. I personally tend to film, edit and then do f thumbnails and then post. And um, that's just what I do. And one thing that I've started to do and I'm going to do more of myself is take lots of sort of default shots of myself and... Uh, and then customize them depending on the video. And so if I'm talking more about filmmaking or if I'm doing more of my film reviews, you know, think about that. So I suppose getting back to the core of the thumbnail, think about um, what the audience, you know, why they should click on it. So if you're making a, a video about, you know, best cheeses to eat in France or something like that, you'd perhaps put uh, a picture of one of your favorite cheeses, maybe highlight it with a bit of color, put some text. Don't use t no more than three words personally, because people just can't be bothered to read it all. So, you know. So, something I haven't actually gone over very much is, 
and something perhaps should have been one of the first things I mentioned is your tripod is your best friend, especially if you're getting started, especially if you're like me and do probably 80 or 90% of your filming by yourself. Your tripod is your best friend. Okay, your number one tool is your phone. Even now, I would say that my phone is my number one tool for quick editing, just quick mobilization of looking over my platforms, my branding, all the rest of it. But when it comes to pure filming, my tripod, along with the camera, I suppose they're sort of a partnership, is my best friend because it's holding the camera, you know, I can make it, if you can get one that's maybe the same height as you, if you're really tall, obviously it's a bit difficult, but if you can get the tallest one you can get, so you can make, perhaps make it as tall or maybe slightly taller than you, it just gives a nicer, more professional shot, makes you look better on camera, that sort of thing. Now, a question I get asked occasionally, um, what editing software do you use? Now, something I haven't really gone into much detail again, because um, this video is just sort of um, going over some of the, the many things that you have to think about on the YouTube channel when you're videoing. Um, now, this is a bit like buying a car, I think, uh, because it's very much down to personal preference. Now, a lot of younger people now, or people in general are editing on their phones, um, I don't personally, but if you do, great. There's some really good apps. Just try a few free ones. You might have to buy a couple, but personally, I'd maybe try a few free ones, see how you get on. I personally prefer um, a computer, but obviously you need a bit more of a powerful one, so bear that in mind. Um, you can't just have any old thing. You might have to get, um, I would recommend maybe a PC because you can actually get more spec for your money. Laptops are fantastic. Um, for mobility, you know, if you're moving around or if you haven't got much space, uh, it is what it is. Take all day. If it's taking you all day, if you're just getting started, it's fair enough. But if it's taking you all day and you've been doing this for months and months, if not years, why? Is it is it just the wrong program for you? It goes back to about what's about cars. Is it just the wrong car? It does it not have a big enough boot? Does it not have, you know, is it not fast enough for you? All this sort of thing. So this is what I would say about editing software. So something I I um it costs more, but something I wish I had done personally, especially in my early days, I wish I had bought, say, two or three softwares and just got to use all three of them and then worked out which one I personally prefer. I'm not saying you should go out and buy 50 of them, but maybe download two or three free ones like Shotcut, and there's a couple other ones out there I'm sure you can find. Um, just try them out and then perhaps invest some money in, in later stage. You will, I will be brutally honest, though, you will have to spend money to get decent editing software if you want the extra effects or if you want after effects or, or whatever. But for just simple transitions to fade, because most videos, let's think about it, when you're watching a video, go back to again, take a notice of every video you watch, um, this video included. Uh, most videos just have simple transitions or text that pop up on the screen, this sort of thing. It doesn't need hundreds and hundreds of pounds worth of software if you're just going to be doing transitions. If you just want video to um, drop and drag. Um, going back to my um, editing earlier, I, I love um, using some of the editing apps because you can just, you know, you think, you know, your thumb or whatnot, you can just drag where you want the text, move the picture around, put a few effects on it, uh, make it look a bit cooler. You've done it in five minutes. You know, sometimes on the more complex programs, you could be there doing layers and all this and cropping that and cutting that and layering that. And it's taking you like two hours. And it probably doesn't actually, unless you're like a pro at it and really good at it, which I appreciate some of you are. But unless you're that, it's going to take you hours to do what probably could have took you five minutes on your phone. And we've all got phones and we've all got free apps. So just think about that. It's just making your life easier. So it's all about making good, high quality standard stuff that you're passionate about but that doesn't take all day and you don't feel like, oh my God, all I do is edit. You don't want it to be about that. Otherwise you'll lose your passion. So bear that in mind. Question now, um, what makes a good video for you? What do you think makes a good video and why? Comment below. Um, if you enjoyed this video, give us a like. Okay, so we're finishing up now. If you've got this far in the video, thank you so much. I bear Bear in mind, there's a lot of information to process and probably listen to, and you by now you're probably thinking, God, oh, Dave, shut up, or if you probably left ages ago. But if you stayed this long, thank you, thank you so much. I hope some of it was useful, hope some of it was helpful. Please feel free to ask me questions below. Um, if there's any tips or hints or info you'd like to know more about or anything I've gone over in this video, you'd like 
like to know more about please please comment below or send me a message or whatever and i'm planning to make much more um in depth uh filmmaking tips on individual topics over the next coming weeks and months so look out for them support the tvr universe by giving us a like subscribe share with family and friends show everyone you know help the tvr universe grow remember that organism help it grow and you're part of that you're part of something bigger you're part of something that's bigger than me bigger than our videos bigger than all of us so yeah so thank you for that so thank you again for watching have a great day if you're watching this later um if you're watching this weeks later or months later or you're watching the day it was posted thank you again so much you guys are the tvr universe i love every single one of you and in this time of the recording it's very important more than ever to keep safe and remember that you rock <laughs>